I'm Phil Yeager. I'm an instructor in computer networking at Dunwoody College of Technology. And today I'm going to recap not only the OSI model, but I'm actually going to uh, um, show you the other two models that I was talking about earlier in the first segment. The OSI model, uh, remember, it's a seven-layer model. One of the things that uh, one has to be careful with with models, um, especially by adding layers, is you add in complexity and con uh, confusion. So with that, as you've seen in the previous segments, with the OSI model, we work from the top or the bottom up, um, which in this world we're used to um, reading from left to right, up from top down. This can be a little discord, uh, discording because it's, we're starting at the bottom and working up. So the physical layer is the piece that um, streams the bits across either the electrical, optical, or radio frequency signals. The data link layer has actually two parts. It's both physical, it's a circuit board, and two, it's logical. It uses firmware to basically tell it what to do. So the data link layer has two sublayers. The MAC sublayer, which actually generates the electrical, optical, and radio frequencies, and the logical link control that creates message delineation, flow control, synchronization, and error control. And this does interface, interface delivery, where we're talking about from network interface card to network interface card. Example would be from a laptop to a two-layer switch. The data link layer uses the MAC address, which is a six-octet number, looking similar to this. And this is where protocols such as Ethernet, um, token ring, uh, wireless A, B, G, and N, um, Bluetooth, ATM, point-to-point -point tunneling are all um, locked into. Physical layer was Manchester signaling, and we also defined hardware at this layer, such as coax, twisted pair, fiber, jacks, ports, um, parallel, USB, whatnot. In some of the models, this layer right here, these two layers, are actually combined into one layer. And it's called the physical layer. If you ever take Cisco's certifications and whatnot, this is one layer. Under the original ARPANET, this was a single layer. It's in the OSI model where this gets broken out. Then we moved up into the network layer, layer three. Once again, it was logical. And this is where the packets are created because it puts on that last header, which includes the destination and source addresses in the IP format. And it could be either IP4 or IP6. And we do host to host delivery. Host-to-host -host delivery at layer three, because now we're talking about routers, could be from router to router, as an example. We use IP addressing. And at present, we're still working with IP4 for the most part. We are starting to tell our students about IP version six. But IP4 is still very much out there. And the numbers that I showed here were the 10, the 172, and the 192 are what are known as private addresses, meaning they're used behind what's known as a NAT or proxy server, uh, NAT being network address translation, um, which is a trick that was used in computers in networks 
uh, because we're running out of these numbers. We're running out of these IP addresses. And that's why we created IP version 6. It's a much larger number. It's actually four times the size of these. The other two numbers, the 127 is the loopback address. And I said that the nice thing about the loopback address is, one, you can test your network interface card to see if it's working. Two, it also checks to see if the TCP IP stack is working. And then the last, 169.254, is the APIP address. And some of the protocols that run on layer three, of course, are IP version four and six, ICMP four and six, which are the tools used for connectivity, IPSec, which is for security, the four interior routing protocols, RIP, eGRIP, and OSPF, and then last, the outside uh, routing protocol, border gateway protocol. So if anybody ever asks you where ping happens, it's on layer three. Then we have the transport layer. Once again, it's logical. Here is where we take the data from the top and we segment it into smaller packets that can be handled by the rest of the system. The segments are numbered if you're using TCP IP. So when you're on a website and getting a web page through TCP IP, if part of that web page does not come across the circuit properly, TCP can ask for that packet to be resent so you get the whole web page. Layer 4 is also end-to-end. -end. That would be as an example from your laptop to that web server that you're trying to look at. And we use ports. Now, I don't know if I clarified this in the earlier segment, Ports are not the, 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 the plugs and things around your computer. This is a logical thing. They're just called ports. And two of the most popular ports are 25, which is for email, and port 80, which is used for web servers. There are over 65,000 ports that can be used. The, there are 1,024 that are known as the well-known ports, and these are two of the well-known ports. On the transport layer, we use TCP. TCP guarantees delivery. And that's why such as web pages use it. Um, UDP, on the other hand, does not guarantee delivery. UDP is used um, a lot for video conferencing, video streaming, or audio streaming, because it's a very small packet. And it uses these three protocols to help that packet get from the server to you. Then in the last segment, we talked about the upper three. The session layer is the connection manager. It starts, maintains, and ends logical sessions. And my example was using RDP, or remote desktop. When you are remoted into, say, your server, you're creating logical sessions between your computer and the server while you're working on it. Once you decide to stop the remote desktop, when you turn it off, it's layer five that actually terminates that connection. Also at this, at this layer, this is where we deal with full duplex, half duplex, and simplex communications. And the three protocols that I was talking about earlier are the NetBIOS, LDAP, or Lightweight Directory Protocol, I'm sorry, Lightweight Directory Access Protocol, and Remote Procedure Call. Um, used in, LDAP is used in Active Directory primarily and other directory services. Then we have the presentation layer, and it really um, sounds like what, it does what it says. It, it formats and numbers things. <clears throat> so in the example that I used the last time, remember we were talking about ASCII, where you type a letter A, it tells the machine it's this many bits of ones and zeros. And that means to you it's an A, to the computer it deals with it as an A. And then we also have like MPEG, JPEG for pictures and movies and music. The last layer was the application layer. 
It's the client server. This is the one that deals with domains and emails. And the addresses are such as www.net.com and you at net.com. And some of the protocols like DNS, DHCP. Now, in the layers, or the, I'm sorry, the models, in the, the four layer model that Cisco uses, the network and the transport layer are left the same. It's the upper three that are all combined into one, and it's called the application layer. In the three layer, these two are combined. But we don't use the three layer very much anymore. The primary models we talk about are, especially here at Dunwoody since we uh, use Cisco equipment, is the Cisco or the four layer, and then of course the OSI model. The last model that I want to talk about really quick is what's known as the internet model or the five layer model. That is not a ratified standardized model. That was actually created by an author. So if you're dealing with models like the OSI model, go out um, and do your research on the internet. Um, you can start at you know, something like Wikipedia, but follow those reference links and back up what they're saying. Um, and you'll find these models out there, and you can compare them side by side. Thank you.